So you guys doing good, right? Perfect. So uh, let's move on to, actually, we're almost done with the chapter A. Um, so you can catch up or um, following up with the audio video I posted on the YouTube channel. Uh, but I'll finish up the chapter A. I'll move on to like the very first uh, part of the chapter uh, 9. And I will stop here today. Uh, my, my plan is hopefully uh, we can uh, kind of uh, do the lecture in a bit of a steady pace. Uh, so I can still save some at least two, one or two lecture time. So I'm actually going to do the full review. So I think it's much better that way. I can point out the important things that we learned in the previous chapters that gives more, uh, more efficient time for us to study for the exam too. And eventually, that by that time, you already know everything about exam one and two material. This is the, the one you need to study for the final exam, which is comprehensive too. Uh, but as, as you can expect or assume, the final exam will be quite easy because also it's open book test. We'll be on the canvas, like I'm gonna do as a extra credit quiz on uh, canvas, so you can kind of see the format there. And also, yeah, go ahead, yes. Will there be material from like test one on test two? Like, yes, 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 okay. yes. So, so final exam will be actually quite easy because you, you kind of see the problem that you already saw in the previous midterm exams. Uh, I'm not gonna give you the new format of the problems, no. Because the that would be too hard. Because the final exam is comprehensive, means you have to study chapter one to eleven. I, I mean that's I mean well I think it's one good thing about this semester though. It's open book test, right? So I mean uh, I think this will be quite a uh, good uh, way to uh, you know de-stress the, your final exam preparation. But anyway, um, so in that way, as I mentioned, I already figured out the previous video too. Uh, in that way. Um, class average usually go really higher at the end of semester. So you don't really have to worry about anything else. Even we think about the exam policy, uh, they all kind of uh, add up to the final grade. Somehow you do quite well in the class. And also I'll do a little bit of card based on the class average on the class um, SS performance. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So is it? Okay. So uh, chapter eight, uh, I think it's the, uh, sub chapter 10, uh, 8.10. Uh, this is the, we talked about some polymerization. Okay, so they actually briefly explains about the polymerization of the sugar, like glucose and peptide, and some nucle uh, nucleotide and so forth, and everything. But obviously, this is organic chemistry. Uh, in the part of the synthetic chemistry, they also talks about some. Synthetic organic chemistry using ethylene. Okay. Uh, so they're going to use this one to make some uh, like uh, polymers. So this one will kind of uh, work as monomer. So mono simply means one. The polymer. Uh, at literally, the poly means uh, multiple members of something. So if you link all the monomers, it will become uh, polymers. Uh, this is the, what I mean by monomer and polymer. If you can uh, polymerize the monomers in a form of a polymer, uh, we call this polymerization. Because we're making polymers from the large numbers of the monomers. So obviously, the one with the double bond is actually a good one to be potentially a good uh, monomer candidate. So here's a some way you can do. I can tell you. <coughs> so if you have uh, something like this one, um, this type of a structure here, this one over here. Um, this is also uh, where you can find the double bonds is kind of arcing. Uh, compound over here. Uh, this is also a good monomer uh, because it's double bond. And also, if you have like a double bond with something that is attached to it, like a methyl group, other ethyl group, and so forth, we could we're gonna call this not just monomer, but it's the minimum uh, monomers. So anything that has double bond and it's any R group attached to that carbon, 
we can call this uh, vinyl monomers because it sends a double bond and the all groups attached to it. So we call this vinyl monomer. And then uh, we're actually going to do this in a very high pressure, a very high pressure. It's really, really high pressure actually. And somewhat high temperature. Not too high, but somewhat high temperature. Uh, in this way, uh, obviously these uh, arcane groups will become very, very uh, reactive. Um, so, but this is between the carbon and carbon, so you can't expect much of the polar reaction, but it will be radical. So what happens to this one is, so we're going to polymerize, right? So we're going to draw one more thing over here, okay? So let's see what happens to this one. So in a double bond, uh, the one and the a pair of electron here, it goes to radical. So do you guys remember fish hook? This one, right? This one. Uh, it's not like this one. So this is the polar reaction. It judges the movement of the pair of electron. But each, each fish hook actually indicates a motion of just one electron here. So I'm, that means I'm going to draw two fish hook arrow for one pair of electron movement here. So it goes to this one, one other here. And this one goes to four here. And same here, this one goes to here. And the, so that makes the radical. That makes the radical here, right? And there's another electron goes in this way. This is what's happening. So uh, radical literally means there's a no lone pair, but just the odd number of electrons are remain on this the certain element. We call this as a radical compound, radical uh, status. So that goes to one on the radical position, the other electron in the fish hook goes in the, uh, to make the bond. And this is, this is the one they found, the one is the radical. Here too, they can make the bonds here. And it's the same thing here. So it's like a polymer, like a chain growth. So uh, it's kind of a chain reaction there. So eventually, you're going to have this one. Uh, because this is this is gone. They made a bond here, right? And this is the same. The same thing happens over here too. So one, one, two, one, two, three. So uh, this is kind of a <coughs> this is a kind of a, a polymerization you can expect from any types of the kin uh, monomers. Uh, this is the uh, but one thing I want you to remember is a radical uh, reaction for sure. And then I actually put the uh, radical here and put the bond here, not here and here, because the, they usually try to form the more um, higher order of the <coughs> uh, radical structures. So, so the secondary uh, radical here. Meaning, if we put the radical in here, this will be uh, primary, right? If that goes here, this will become to just the primary. This is the lower order. But this is the second because there's two carbon here. So when you expect the uh, radical, which the cleave is the double bond, uh, one have electron in the double bond to be in uh, each different position. You put the radical carbon in the more substitute position, like in the second order is better than primary. Uh, that's the only thing, uh, but this is um, uh, something you can do. So let me give you one more example here. It's pretty much the same. So if I give you this one, okay, but instead of the methyl group, we have chlorine here. Okay, so it's binary chloride, or you can say it's a chlorobinyl uh, monomer, you name it. Uh, but this is uh, just it's slightly different. We just change the methyl group to the chlorine group over here. So uh, same thing happened here. The radical on the more substitute carbon here, and the other one goes to the, make another bond to make a chain reactions. So they actually eventually made this one. This one. Right? It's pretty much the same, right? Uh, just one goes in here, the other one goes in here. So this is the radical that gets another radical fish hook there. And another one here, another one here. Okay, kind of makes sense, right? So 
the my question now is, do you guys like to cook? Sometimes, really? Because I'm a terrible cook. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you like. I like the fried rice. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Spraying the rice with the a lot of vegetable oil. I think it gets a little bit of flavor into the uh, rice. Um, have you heard peplons? Peplons. You? Oh, really? Oh, you're frying pan. You fry things. You put the vegetable oil, but we use the teflon because the that makes your frying pan not sticky to the one you're cooking. Um, so it's kind of coated with the teflon. It's coming from here. So it's a tetra floral ethylene. So that makes the polymer too. And this is why when you cook something, you're not going to have your nice meal stick to the bottom. Uh, this is something, uh, so that's why they actually name it like teflon. It's tetrafluoral kind of ethylene polymerized coated uh, frying pans. But, uh, that's, uh, that's what it is. You don't have to know this one for the example. It's, it's a very common item you can see as a good use. Uh, beside all the plastic we're using. Um, can I do a little bit about side talk here? Just a couple of minutes here. The my my research uh, area is mainly focused on the polymer too. Uh, but among a lot of polymers, the one I'm doing is the what we call hydrogen. Have you guys ever heard this one before? Not really. So the if you see the all the polymers here, like I just told you, <coughs> they're all like uh, hydrophobic. Because they're all made in the carbon, carbon, uh, well, uh, such as with the flow and everything. But hydrogel is the polymer that is made of hydrophilic monomer. Do you remember what hydrophilic is? It's a water like compound, meaning it has a polar. There's a, a lot of polar diaper movements there, so they can well interact with the water. Uh, but the thing is, uh, whenever you have something that is like water, they usually dissolve in water. Uh, so that's kind of a problem when you do something more uh, biological uh, functions on uh, certain things. So what we normally do here is the, do you know why water is clean, water is uh, clear? You see the water is, was it transparent, right? Uh, do you know why we see things? We, perfect. We need that light, right? So we can watch in a certain wavelengths we have visual light range, you can detach it by our optical sensory organs here. So whenever light comes with any obstruction, there you can see there's almost nothing. There's nothing that can reflect there's something there. The the electrons in the water, electrons in water usually do not interfere up so much with the way that electromagnetic radiation happens, which is the light. Uh, so when it goes here, there's almost no effect here. So when you get to the our eye, it looks just nothing there. That's why it looks so transparent. Kind of makes sense, right? So if it is some object to like some deflecting here, or so the lot of lights and the emit only a little bit of lights, that makes more like op opaque hue, like more like a, uh, not transparent much. But water is actually successful that or not interfering much with the electronegative like radiation there. But uh, if you have a something that dissolves in water, that compound, now it's notable by naked eye, goes in the water, it disappears, but it just doesn't disappear, they cover by water. We call this hydration. We remember this one, right? So that actually, we can see this one because it's covered by invisible blanket. Kind of makes sense, right? But the hydrogen here, it's a hydrophilic, but it come out of water because of the, even though they like the water well, these are kind of poly, polar kind of monomer linked polymer. If it gets bigger and bigger, water cannot encapsulate much easier, like as it does in the smaller ones. It comes out. So we have a something that is water insoluble, but still hydrophilic and quite a bit in size. Why it's so important? because the 
everything that is happening in your body is very water-based. Um, so all the biology function should have some uh, physical or chemical cues to do it. Uh, this is one of the good platform to do it. So this is why we are so excited about this one in medicine. I'm sorry, I talk too much. I'll move on. <laughs> you guys are what? Okay. But just telling you, this is a quite important field. That's why I'm most interested in research. Uh, anyway, I'll move on. So whenever you go to chapter 11 to chapter 13, uh, they give a lot of example of a biological. Um, this the events like, and also it talks about the whenever you have some. Arcane related uh, chemical mechanism, there will be some stereochemistry uh, specific uh, kind of a, a related problems there, uh, which I'm not going to cover in uh, again. So you don't have to do this one. Uh, once again, uh, whenever you study the chapter 8, uh, there's a last two couple pages at the end of the chapter 8. There's a su good summary of the reactions, like something goes in with a certain region and that makes a certain uh, products. Uh, you'll see that that's the perfect ones. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. Besides this polymerization, but this one will not be on the exam, so don't worry about this one too much. Uh, so I move on to chapter nine. Okay. So chapter nine, uh, obviously it talks about the archive. Now we have uh, something to do with the uh, triple bonds now. Okay. So the first part of the chapter nine is about uh, nomenclature. Obviously, we need to know what's the name of it so we can use it for any. Uh, chemical reaction. So, this, I'll give you one example here. So, if I have this one over here, I just need to all, it's pretty much the same. I'm not going to cover too much time on this one because it's very really similar to what we did with arcane and arcane and so forth. Same thing. But the only thing that made the changes here is uh, y and e at the end. So, we'll be able to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 is off this way. And now, we have to put this y and e is off time. But when it gets some the old time, uh, you just need to position here where the uh, triple bond is. So you're gonna have not gonna count the carbon from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but we actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to give a minimum number, minimum possible number for the location of the triple bond will be one. This is between one and two carbons here. So I'm gonna choose one, which is lower than two, to be one of time and stuff. So as I mentioned before for the arcane or ar arcane, um, you can, this is old fashioned, but still we use it. Uh, they try to make a new trend here, it's the op one i uh, It's okay, this is a newer one, but uh, the, especially the people in America, they still don't really take it, it's, it's just weird. So, <laughs> so uh, I think I'm, I'm totally fine with this one. Uh, you may see this one in the other literature and your other textbook, but just don't be surprised, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, just you change to put it in the way it sees the actual triple bond naming. So just to put right there, I think they think it's more accurate, but uh, I don't know. So anyway, either way it's fine. So <clears throat> this is pretty much the same. Uh, we, we count the carbon because this, this is the way you can find the triple bond. This is a more important part of your compound. So we're gonna count the carbon from here. So maybe I'll trip a little bit more. So maybe I can give you double bond here. Okay. So in this case, uh, what you can do is the uh, you can have uh, the op. This is op now king, but uh, you actually going to the. Let me see. The what can I say? It's actually E and E. But you remove the uh, last E over here, okay? And then you put the, uh, among these two, double bond and triple bond, still triple bond is the high priority. So we'll still be one, two, three, not here. So we'll still count the cover here. So we have a triple bond in the one position, two, this is three, right? So you can say uh, there's a three of, and one iron is fine. Or you can say opt three in one iron is fine. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, let me treat you just one more time. 
this one. Okay, so this one, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this. This is the two ENE. The two is dying. Uh, so two dying away. So once again, it's uh, up the dying. So we you can say um, the three and seven oak ta dying one iron. That's fine. So same here. Oak ta three and seven dying. No e at the end, but just the one iron. Kind of makes sense, right? It's, it, I think this is the kind of a trickiest main, nomenclature you can do in odd kind ones with the double bonds, even two. So it's same. If you have a three tried iron and so forth, uh, but it's just the same rule applied here. So maybe I'll trick you just one more time. Uh, this one here. So you have a metric group in now five. So now in this case, you can do five. Matthew, okay, and I'll just keep three and seven octa nine and one i. I'm sorry, one i. Okay. We good, right? It it looks kind of complicated. It just literally just combine everything you just knew about it and put it in. So once again, it doesn't matter. You can put it right in. Uh, I don't care. Uh, you can you can actually say five methyl octa three seven dian one iron. That's also fine. Okay. It's pretty pretty kind of straightforward, though, right? It's just yeah. a lot of things combined. But you know the locons come here, lock locon here, substituent groups here. You have a summa like a suffix in the middle too, but it doesn't matter where it is. And now you have a suffix, real suffix at the end, which is triple one. So I uh, y n. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. I think this is the the hardest nomenclature I can think of from uh, chapter nine. So if you can get this one, you're pretty much good with the uh, nomenclature for R. Makes sense, right? You good? Um, can I move on? Okay, I'll move on. All right, let's move on. So let's talk about some of the R kind related uh, chemical problems here. So there will be oh, so this one. We have a uh, okay. so we have a okay. we have a certain like a, a king groups over here. Uh, what we can do is we can treat it with the some uh, bromines over here. Okay. So we can try to run it with the some organic solvent molecules, okay, like a, in the solution. So what you can do is the you're going to um, this is uh, what we did uh, before in the arcane previous chapter, but they're going to have a uh, groups over here. Okay. Do you guys, do you guys remember this arcane kind of this two halogenations goes on? the opposite direction. Uh, in this case, you don't have to worry about because this is now linear. You can always rotate. Uh, so this is happening. Uh, so once you get this this part, you have a two hydro, hydrogen, like a hydro compound here. Uh, here's the key. Whenever you treat this one with the, the halogen groups, uh, whenever you treat with the strong base, so it doesn't really have to be just potassium hydroxide. This is one of the strong base. But any strong base, uh, there are four actually strong base you can use. Uh, that will make this one to in R kind. So uh, as you can see, there's hydrogen here, right? So the hydroxyl group takes the two hydrogen as water, two water, and bromine also taken into the hydrogen bromide here. So that, that's uh, one way to make the alkyne compounds using um, halogens and also using some kind of a strong base uh, so we can uh, make the alkyne groups. We call this elimination. 
So you, you can use the elimination uh, process to make the alkyne groups for uh, some compounds like the 1, 2, phenyl uh, l ethylene We call it stagen uh, in a short name, but uh, this is something you can do. So you can halogenate it first, you can try to treat the strong base, make it more uh, high order in one order, which is the alkyne. With the elimination process, we run out of this. So this is kind of a way to make it. Uh, let's just break one now. So this is the uh, one where you can make some you know, double bond. One example. Uh, the one. Uh, so there's a way to make it uh, even broken too. So if you have uh, some kind of a uh, uh, triple bond, let me give you one. Just anything should be okay. Yeah. So if you have uh, some triple bond over here, uh, you can treat it with some like an eight oh so you can treat it with the HX form. So by the way X is a halogen here. Okay. So if you can change like a HX is a more acidic form or just the halogenation, uh, we can do this too. But if you do this, uh, you remember a few of you guys remember uh, bromine will attack the one on the more substitute carbon. This is where you can find the more stable carbon cation. Uh, so you won't be like this one. Okay? Uh, more major further would be like this one. Okay. So the if that's happening here, you can go one more step. Here. So finally, you can get this to the arcane uh, structure. So it's a, this is what we did. Bef uh, this is similar to what we did before, uh, but uh, this we have all our kind ones. We have just one more. There's two steps. They can eventually get to the double bond and the, just the single bond here. Just adding this one. But I know we're going to show the hydrogens here. But this is something absurd. What you can do, okay? Okay, so it's a pretty much the same here. Whenever you do this with the <clears throat> this one, this one, right? Uh, what you can do is what? This one. Okay. You kind of see that, right? It's pretty much the same, but um, you just need to do either with the halogenation or the HX uh, halogen form, so you can have a more uh, the alkyne to the arkene, kin to the arkene, and so forth. Okay, so I think that's the uh, makes sense. Do you need any? Okay, so this is, uh, this is pretty much. Oh, oh, this is one. Actually, there's one more thing. Uh, so here's the one thing I want to point out before I move on to the next one. Um, so remember we had a carbocation. Whenever you have a this one comes in with the arcane, right? This one it makes the uh, uh, this one, but this will be something like this one. You remember this one, right? Carbocation position here. Uh, but instead of uh, arcane, you have R kind. Uh, you're just going to have a uh, this one, this one. So it's a, pretty much the same, uh, but it's in the arcane form. But the carbon cation is there. So we call this vinyl uh, carbon cation. Like I said, this is a kind of double bond with the some uh, something there. So it's a kind of vinyl form, but it's in the uh, carbon with the positive charge, we call this uh, binding carbon cation. This is the only difference, but it's pretty much the same, uh, pretty much the same that we did in the previous chapter with the double bond. So this simply we just interpret the double, it's pretty much the same. So I think uh, it kind of really helps if you do. Um, I know chapter eight was quite long and a lot of things to study for, but it kind of paid up much already. We're gonna do much of similar things in our kind. Anyone? Uh, so uh, I think that's a really good thing. Okay. All right. So 
the there's one more thing I want to go over on chapter nine. So uh, we're gonna do some hydrations. <clears throat> with the uh, mercury to sulfate. Uh, it's obviously with the alkyne. So if you have some alkyne over here, uh, you can treat it with the water. And we're gonna put it in a bit of an acidic condition, so we're gonna use the sulfuric acid here uh, in a solution, so it's an actual sulfuric solution here, right? Obviously, uh, this mercury also at this time will be used as uh, some kind of a chemical that's the hydration going for hemogenation. See, uh, since it's a mercury to sulfate here, um, it will be quite similar to what we also, also saw in the uh, previous chapter as well. But eventually, what does that do is they're going to make the... So, the it's pretty much the same as hydration before we learn, right? This is double bond. This is the arcane, now it's hi, 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 the hydration, OSNH. But now it's triple with the double, that's the only difference. But it has the hydration for sure, with the OH and H there, with the water, right? So it's pretty much the same, thanks to the previous chapter 8. But uh, this is the this is a bit different. This is whenever it has an OH hydroxy group, we use alcohol. Whenever it has a hydroxy group, we consider the compound is alcohol, like methanol, ethanol, proton, so anything that is the hydroxy group will consider like alcohol here. But that with the double bond, so double bond once again is ENE, like alkene, right? Uh, but this is alcohol, so the O, right? Alcohol, so this is alcohol. So we just remove this one again, as we did for the nomenclature before, and we can suppose enol compounds here, okay? And then, uh, whenever you do the experiment, uh, interestingly, most of them will be not enol here, but more like keto form. So what I mean by that is, the, they actually goes into this form more often, Uh, so this is the carbonic group with two R, carbon carbon. So it's a ketone. This is a ketone, right? Uh, but this is the so we call this keto tautomer. We call this eno tautomer. And uh, whenever you do this, uh, you are supposed to see this one because hydrolation. But this air some equilibrium is more headed to this way than this way. So they actually go back and forth isomers, but they go more in the keto tautomer isomer form rather than this one. So you will see more of this one than this one. Uh, so we call this, uh, we kind of try to distinguish the two uh, isomers as a product or like a one side, uh, sided like a uh, product uh, yield kind of thing. So we call this the uh, eno tautomer, eno keto tautomer uh, as this. Um, so, the, I'm not going to tell you why it's more in this way. It's because of the alpha carbon substitution by electrophile, which you will actually learn in chapter 20, chapter 22. Uh, so if you, are you guys taking O2, right? So you'll get there uh, next semester. Uh, so don't worry about this one for sure now, but this is also uh, our kind of related uh, the reaction we can do in the uh, normally in the chemistry, uh, but you don't have to know how it's happening. But I just want you to know those two terms that we call eno and keto tautomer, uh, because there are certain reaction makes more favor in this way in equilibrium status. Uh, so we see this one, uh, maybe not just one, maybe you know the form of the uh, product. Kind of makes sense, right? You good. So uh, there's another one. We're gonna do the similar uh, one with the boring, uh, but instead of the ketone, they're gonna give aldehyde form. Um, so uh, this is something I'll probably to cover uh, this Friday. So I'll just stop here today. Okay? And thank you guys. That's it. Um, <coughs> All right. Let me just.
let's knock this one first.